we are left with uh, two topics that is about the partitioning and i think we already talked about the uh, performance tuning how it can be tuned and everything and the uh, next one is about the partitioning option let's say how does it works on the partitioning part see basically the partitioning is nothing but a parallel processing so parallel processing means um, for executing let's say for processing uh, uh, for processing the data um, will create a session and uh, that session will create by default one partition and that partition is nothing but a thread which it is called so you know that uh, whenever we execute um, a session it creates a DTM buffer cache and this DTM will create the three threads one is called as a reader thread and another is called as a transformation thread and the next one is called as a writer thread which it is corresponds to that so for each and every time you execute a session so one reader thread one transformation thread and one writer thread will be created so that means each session will have only one partition minimum of one partition should be there and uh, it will have one reader thread one transformation thread and one writer thread which it will be there and then process the data suppose let's say i have some 100 million records for processing 100 million records it is taking let's say three hours of time to process the 100 million records from the source to the target so basically if you give all these hundred million records to this partition this only one reader thread has to read the data from database and one transformation thread has to transform it completely and one writer thread basically what we do is when you say that partitioning will increase the number of processes to uh, load this data or complete this data so you can increase the number so what you can do is I can have I can create a multiple partitions at the session level something like a P2 and P3 and which will also create a separate threads like this reader thread writer thread and the transformation thread what you have so basically you are making sure that instead of processing the all data with a single partition we are trying to execute that using the three different partitions what you have so basically when you actually uh, create a multiple uh, parallel process all these processes will execute parallelly not sequentially it will execute parallelly in a way that will create a multiple partitions at the session level to distribute the data uniformly so what i'll do now with this partition so i'll execute i mean i'll process 33.33 million records and with this i'll process the 33.33 and with this like 33.33 so basically you'll end up in i mean i'm actually loading the i'm dividing the data among the three different partitions so that i can reduce the i mean i can reduce the load time what what it is actually taking so by default one session will have one partition in case whenever you want to tune the performance of your data loading process you need to increase the number of partitions and distribute the data among the processes among the parallel process so that it will reduce the amount of time now when you see that 100 million records is distributed obviously since 33.33 uh, .33 million records are being processed by each partition and you'll get the you know uh, out of this hundred million records uh, you'll basically have the it'll take you know if it is taking uh, three hours for a hundred million records obviously when you create the three partitions three by three obviously it'll take only one hour to complete that so in a simple words partitioning is nothing but enabling the parallel processing in your session that's it so by creating the multiple partitions you're creating the multiple reader threads multiple transformation threads and multiple writer threads which effectively increasing your uh, data loading process which so that is the use about the partitioning so as i said yesterday um, informatica uh, advanced tradition only you'll see the partitioning option and the high availability push down optimization all these options and informatica standard edition the basic edition which we are using you're not going to identify so basically first you need to understand you know 
uh, you need to understand where do I see the partitioning option in the uh, workflow manager level push down optimization partitioning all these options you can enable only in the workflow manager practically you may not be uh, seeing it because I'm logging into the different repository to show you so basically let's say uh, this is my uh, administrator credentials I'm just logging into the usual repository where we actually go okay this is our uh, working folder so right click on it click on open and then this and and if you go to the workflow designer edit the session so generally the partitioning option will be enabled here so you have a transformation tab next to that you'll have a partition tab if it is your informatica power center is an advanced addition since this is a basic addition this option is not available see this is this is option where i'm actually mousing over that is where you'll identify the partition option but let me just log into the advanced repository where we can see that partition option and understand how to create the multiple partitions so if you go here let's say let me just log into this and there are different types of partition or different types of algorithm to distribute the data in the multiple processes so let me just log in so if i edit this here and go to the same mapping tab here under this mapping tab you have the partition tab which it is here so this is a general partition option which you have see basically you'll have the same mapping uh, list in the this format basically when you want to uh, by default you'll have a partition something like this i mean by default you'll have one partition and you cannot uh, reduce that partition i mean you cannot delete that basically you cannot delete that uh, i mean you cannot make uh, what i'm trying to say you cannot make the session as as a zero partition one partition is minimum in the sense one reader thread one writer thread and one transformation thread so you can't delete or you can't reduce it to zero partitions because one is minimum thing so whenever you want to add the partitions here you have a different types of uh, partition types where you can actually distribute it and then do it so let me um, uh, let me go here um, see basically it's about uh, when you create a multiple partitions in the session level uh, there are a different algorithms I call it as an algorithms or the different ways where you can actually distribute the data among the different partitions so it's based on the different types you can uh, do that so the partitions are basically of different types so one is like you have a pass-through partition and another is you have a round robin partition or let's say key range partition key range partition and you have a database partitioning and you have a round robin partition round robin method round robin method and you also have a hash user key partition and hash auto key partition so these are all the different user key partition and you have a hash auto key partition so these are all the different algorithms which you have it is just that when you enable the different types of partitions it will distribute the data according to its own rules everything whatever you are defining so basically let's talk about first is about the pass through partition i cannot show you the practically the performance how it is improved but I can just show you how to enable or create the partitions here so when you can go here edit the partition point here you can enable what type of partition you want let's say if you create a pass-through partition and I want to create let's say three partitions I want to create for this session one two and then three you have three partitions there will be a three partitions which will be created at the reader level writer level and then for this transformation thread as well now if I uh, actually go back to my transformation logic, you'll be seeing three transformations, you know, uh, three uh, SQL queries, what it does. Basically, what happens is that uh, instead of firing a one SQL statement to the database, when you create the three partitions, 
it will fire at three different SQL statements to the database. So SQL 1, partition 1, partition 2 and partition 3. Here you can enable or you can filter the data according to that. Let's say I have a data according to the year. 2001 data will be processed by partition 1. Partition 2 will process the 2002 data, 2003 data, something like this. I can create my own filters and fire these queries to the database. So pass-through partition will create the three different threads on the uh, reader level and it will fire uh, different SQL statements to the database to read it. See, uh, practically speaking, is it uh, advantageous to read the data from database using one query or multiple queries obviously multiple queries so we are writing mutually exclusive queries here none of the none of the two queries will return you the same data so suppose let's say if i have 100 million records which i have to read based on these three queries one query will read 30 million another query will read 30 million another query will read 40 million so that way i can distribute the data so if all the queries are returning the same data or reading the same data you'll end up in processing 300 million records not the 100 million records whatever it is if you talk about the same example what we are talking so that is the reason you know um, basically whenever uh, you enable the pass-through partition you need to enable the uh, mutually exclusive filters a mutually exclusive filter should be defined for all these different partitions what we have so pass through partition is something that which you can enable and define the filter conditions here in the sql queries so there is a other type of partition let's say instead of a pass through you want to go for a key range partition so when you enable a key range partition based on the date open column you can actually i mean let's say any column you can choose and according to that you can uh, divide the data basically now i can define the start range and end range for this and according to that it will divide the data into three different partitions and process the data so that is how let's say if i want to define uh, 2000 year data so i can do this and similarly and let's say this one 1231 2000 000000 so likewise you can define your own date range uh, whatever it is there mmddyyy hh24 okay nonsense one second Why for one it is accepting, it is not. Okay. So what I'm trying to say, <clears throat> when you're creating a, a range partition, so basically what you need to do is you can actually create the uh, different, uh, based on any field, you can define a start range value and the end range value according to this start range and end range this will divide the data into yeah this will divide the data into multiple different for multiple different partitions and then do that so this is uh, about the key range partition what you see and if you talk about the database partitioning basically what a database partitioning does is it will go and query your uh, database it will go and query your database 
and understand that how many partitions are there in the uh, how many partitions are there in the database according to that partitions it will read the data and process it so if you create the three partitions according to uh, your database partitioning it will go and read uh, your database partitioning and according to that it will distribute the data so likewise you can enable the different types of partitions see in a simple words it is just to improve your performance other than that nothing else there is no functional uh, logic inside this it is just to enable the parallel processing for your data load and then improve the performance so these are the partitions that you can enable on the source side in the target side you can also change the uh, partition type so you can also make use of the round robin method see you're not sure about how to distribute the data in the target level and you can always uh, basically you know uh, you can always edit and choose the different partition so based on this algorithm round robin algorithm it will distribute the data at the target level so when you're not sure about how to distribute the data evenly among the different partitions you can go for a round robin method and whenever uh, you want to add a partitions on the aggregator level let's say uh, in this mapping your aggregator transformation is taking almost three hours of time to aggregate the data whatever we are processing and so three hours uh, which it is taking for an aggregator transformation is a huge uh, time so I want to basically divide this aggregator transformation uh, into uh, divide this aggregator transformation into three different partition and process it so only the aggregator transformation you can do that so you can also enable the partition point within the informatica to do that so here if I add a partition point and if I am selecting as hash auto keys based on the group by columns it will divide the data into three different partitions and then process so what i'm trying to say you can not only enable the uh, partitions at the source level and the target level to do that you can also break one single individual transformation into multiple processes and then complete the task whatever it is so basically these are all the partitions whatever we talk about hash auto key hash user key pass through partition these are all the things which helps you to distribute the data among evenly among the all the partitions that's only the reason i mean that's only the reason why we go for a different types of partitions you should actually understand which partition will help you to distribute the data uh, uniformly across the different partitions based on that you can choose it if it is a pass through you need to define your own filter condition if it is a key range you need to define the start range and end range values for that and according to that it will distribute the data and if it is a database partitioning it will take care of your informatica will read the database partitions and then process the data round robin means it's like if you have three partitions one two three four five six like that it will uniformly distribute the data in use it and hash user key partition is actually useful for an aggregator transformation and uh, sorter transformation whenever you have and uh, sorry hash auto key partition is suitable for an aggregator transformation and all hash user key and all when you are uh, if you want to uh, divide the data based on the hash function uh, using an any column you can choose that so that is uh, more or less about the different partitions see practically if you have to see them how they are working you should have some millions of data and then try to enable the different partition and see whether it will reduce the amount of time or not so to understand more uh, examples like how it looks in the monitor level and everything i gave you the screenshots um, in the informatica labs pdf to understand like how uh, partitioning option works in informatica 9 so if you try to go uh, it's basically you have the multiple reader threads transformation thread and everything and if you go and see in the monitor level um, monitor level it looks something like this see they have created a 
three partitions on this on the order thing so partition one has not processed any records here partition two has processed this many records partition three this one and if you see order scd3 it doesn't have anything at all you don't have anything and it has only these partition details what you have so basically this is more about the uh, partition details how it looks in the monitor level it will divide the data according to the each partition and it will show the statistics according to the each partition what it is there if you go to the source target statistics in the monitor level so at the at this level you know um, at the session level you'll not be able to identify like how much time it has taken i mean you'll be able to determine how much time it has taken but you'll not be able to understand uh, how the partitions have uh, i mean how the partitions are actually enabled on that and then see that so this is just for your uh, reference how the general partitioning option works so you can refer it here to understand theoretically what it is that practically we will not be able to see that because we don't have such a huge data to replicate and understand on the partitioning option all right any questions here before we go with other things all right so the next one that we are going to understand is about um next one is about the um, processing of the data uh, using the push down optimization so what is a push down optimization okay so we know that um, basically the whenever we execute a session uh, informatica will read the data from your source and it will transform the data within the informatica server memory and then it will load the data into the target table so when you talk about the push down optimization uh, basically the it will transform the i mean it will convert the mapping logic into an sql and then that sql will be executed in the source database or the target database so push down optimization can be enabled at the source level or at the target level or full push down optimization full push down so when you go to the workflow manager so even push down optimization is a licensed version you see that option here push down optimization so let me take a simple example so what i'm trying to say here is um, if you go to this january 1 and let me just take the simple example basically the transformation logic will happen within the informatica server so i don't want to perform the transformation logic within the informatica server rather i want to push the transformation logic into the source database or the target database what you have so when you try to edit this you know um, you go to the push down optimization um, mapping tab and then enable this is your push down optimization tab basically if you enable the push down optimization option to the source see what it is doing is it is actually converting this mapping transformation logic which you have on the source qualifier and the expression transformation logic it has converted into an sql and this query will be executed in your source database and the transformation logic it won't perform because it's already pushing this logic it will just bring that data and then load it into the target table that's it it won't uh, perform the transformation logic within here let's say if you want to push the transformation logic to the target so it is pushing the logic if you see the insert statement and it is using the cast function to uh, convert into a character data type and then doing it so this is about the push down optimization option basically it will convert the transformation logic into an sql and that sql will be executed against the source database or the target database now you're not sure where you want to push the logic whether i want to go to the source or a target you're not sure then you can select the full push down optimization then informatica integration service will decide whether it has to be pushed to the source or it has to be pushed to the target level so it will decide so if you select uh, push down optimization is of three types if you select the source uh, 
a transformed SQL query will be executed on the source database. If you select the target, transformed SQL query will be executed in the target. And if you select the full pushdown optimization, uh, it will decide where it has to, whether it has to push the logic to the source or whether it has to push the logic to the target. It could also be the case that some of the transformation logic it will push to the source and some of the transformation logic it will push to the target. That's how. That's how it will define the push down optimization. Um, basically, that's how it will work in this case. So push down optimization is having a lot of limitations. OK, so basically what happens is that and if you have uh, any workflow of fax sales initial. OK, let's go to this and then I'll show you what are the limitations that it has. Maybe ODS sales. I think we can check. See, a push down optimization doesn't work if your mapping contains, uh, uh, you know, the parameters or variables, whatever it has, it doesn't take it. So, this parameter, I mean, this mapping is uh, having a variable, uh, variables and mapping parameters. I'll check out this and show you how the uh, push down optimization will throw the warning to you. Okay, let me just edit it. Go to the mapping tab and enable the push down optimization. See, uh, no push down optimization is set because uh, data connection variable need to be set. Okay, let me just. So there are uh, limitations uh, with. Um, uh, there are a limitation with the push down optimization. If it if you are using a XML transformation, you cannot push that to the database. If you are using the logic like a normalizer transformation, you cannot push that to the database. So basically there are limitations which are exist for a push down optimization. Um, since because it has more limitations, we don't uh, use much in the real time. So you can even view the push down optimization window from here as well just by clicking on that. So basically um, push down optimization is not much used in the real time uh, to do that. Basically instead of uh, uh, if you are pushing the logic to the source database your source OLTP database will get overloaded and if you are pushing to the target. Yeah, it's always advisable to push it to the target. Basically the push down optimization is available for all the databases. Yes, so it is available for Oracle first and they have enabled then they have in the latest version they have enabled for Teradata system and then they also enabled for a DB2 as well. So it works. I'm not sure about the SQL server uh, whether the push down optimization works for it. Uh, these are the supported databases for it and maybe the other databases will may not work advanced workflow guide and push down optimization overview. <clears throat> Working with these databases. Okay, it works with DB2, SQL Server, Netiza, Oracle, Sybase, Teradata. So, databases that use ODBC drivers also, it will work. So, these are the you can configure a push down optimization only for these databases and it will not work with the other things. So, basically, the if you are uh, working error handling, recovery, and all. If you are uh, having the uh, sessions which has error handling, which has the logging mechanism and which has a recovery, you cannot use the push down optimization. So push down optimization compatibility is for a joiner, union, lookup, target for all these databases. Incompatible with some, some other databases. So it has a lot of limitations. So basically uh, we don't prefer much in the real time uh, using the push down optimization unless your database engines are very very powerful like Oracle Exadata and uh, Teradata systems. So it's better to always perform within the Informatica server itself rather than pushing the logic to the database level. All right, so that completes uh, a details on the push down optimization what you have. All right. So that's it. I have um, 
according to the syllabus that we have completed and only the thing which we are um, left now is about the interview preparation how you have to go about it all these things i'll explain you now okay any questions before we go on to this All right. See, um, I think we have not received any of your resumes uh, regarding the um, how you need to explain about your project and everything. Uh, anyway, I'll just go and give you the inputs about how you have to proceed when you are talking with a, I mean, when you are talking an interview and how you have to explain in the Informatica Power Center project. See, basically, the interview preparation when you are uh, preparing yourself, you need to concentrate on the different skills okay so what and all are the things that they expect you to do is they will ask you the questions on sql and they will also ask you on the basic plsql part how you actually write i think we already discussed this and they will also uh, ask you about the concepts on the data warehousing and they will ask you the questions on the data modeling like star schema snowflake schema and the definitions of the different dimensions and everything then they will go to the informatica power center like uh, they'll test you very deep on the informatica power center part and uh, and the next one is about the unix shell scripting so these are all the things which you have to prepare yourself uh, for an informatica power center developer so when you go in as a six year old developer and all so you should be able to understand all these things related to this so that you'll be able to answer them in a proper way so all these skills if you're good then it will be easier for you to um, clear the interviews so even when you're preparing also make sure that you're uh, following this um, skills uh, for preparing uh, anyway we will forward you the interview questions whatever it is there okay we will post that interview questions on your emails uh, main thing about is the uh, how you are explaining about your resume uh, when you are talking about the project see basically they'll ask you about can you introduce about yourself so can you so when you're talking about it so you should explain in a way that okay i'm so and so and have an experience in informatica power center over six years and i'm comfortable with uh, these databases like you need to explain them which databases that you have worked so in your resume you have actually kept an oracle database and then the teradata let's say sql server and all so you can say that i worked with uh, oracle teradata and sql server databases whatever it is there but in this training we concentrated only on the oracle part so you can also explain that how i mean if you are uh, project is talk i mean talking about an sql server database it, there is no much difference if you use sql server and all you can just explain that how it is there so i worked with these these databases and uh, which version of informatica now currently you are using so they'll ask you uh, what version of database you are using mainly the version questions uh, obviously that will come so you can explain since we are learned with informatica power center 951 so just explain about informatica power center 951 and now after we started the training the latest version uh, is also being into the market and people started using it that is your 961 is the latest version so when you talk about the database versions so you should be able to explain them so let's say oracle is 11g and sql server is 2008 all these things which you can explain and once you explain about the technology so <clears throat> you can also explain like uh, informatica server or informatica server is installed in the linux and uh, it is there on the linux database and what bi tool it is being used 
ETL tool, that's fine. So what are the BI tool that is used in your project? So they'll ask you. So you should be able to tell them this is what the BI tool is being used. But if you are comfortable, you can say that, okay, I'm comfortable with it to a little bit, little extent, or you can say that I'm not comfortable with it. There is a separate team which is actually handling about it. Let's say you can talk about, let's say, OBIE or a business objects or uh, let's say, any other uh, tool like a Cognos or a Tableau, anything that you can explain on this, on the BI tools part. So when you explain about the architecture of the project, first you can explain yourself like um, what are the databases that are involved and which ETL tool is being used and obviously the Informatica Power Center and uh, what are the BI tool that is being used in this. So when you explain about the project, basically that they ex they understand i mean they they would like to understand from you is that what is the project is implemented what is the purpose of implementing that project and how it is helping to the business users that is what you have to concentrate more on then you need to explain about your roles and responsibilities let's say when you talk about the project don't say say that as you know um uh details about the project as description and all so you can explain in such a way that let's say um, you have a project where you have a legacy systems and you're replacing that legacy system reporting with a warehouse or you can just explain let's say we have an um, oracle erp system as a source system okay um, oracle ebs or source system is our oracle ebs I'm just giving you an example. So according to your resume, you can convert this. So Oracle EBS is our source system and we have implemented a data warehouse. Um, data warehouse for, a, I mean, we have implemented a data warehouse in Oracle for all the subject areas. Let's say when you talk about all the subject areas, um, it's like uh, orders manage, order management analytics or let's say uh, sales analytics, and HR analytics like that. So you can just explain uh, what analysis is being done on your uh, project end. So basically what I'm trying to say here is like we have integrated the data from Oracle EBS system and we have created a we have created a data for the different subject areas like a sales and finance and the order management and OBIE is being used as a reporting tool. Uh, Generally, the business user will generate the reports and understand how much the sales that they have made and what are the financial risks that they have or um, what are the different, uh, what is the growth of the business, all these and all these, all these things they actually generate from the data warehouse. So that's how you have to explain maybe in a two or three lines. Um, then you need to go about coming to my roles and responsibilities. So your responsibilities you have to explain. So basically the purpose of the project is very important. How your business users are using and how they are generating a reports is very important and then explain that. So based on your uh, project, you can actually prepare those two or three lines and how you have to explain about the project purpose. So then coming to my roles and responsibilities. So what you have to explain is that, okay, so you can say that as I have uh, involved in the end-to-end -end development, um, I have involved in implementing the end-to-end uh, -end ETL lifecycle. So what is an end-to-end -end ETL project lifecycle? So we already understand in our training like how uh, ETL project lifecycle starts and how you have to do that. I have involved in end-to-end -end project lifecycle and in terms of understanding the requirements from the customer, understanding the requirements uh, from the customer. So customer is nothing but your business user, whoever is actually gives you the requirements and uh, translating the uh, requirements into design, translating the uh, requirements into design requirements you know um, into design so when you say that design so tell them that i've involved in the high level design as well as a low level design uh, what it is there prepare the you can third one you can actually say that as prepare the uh, design documents so you need to also familiar with the documentation how it has to be done uh, prepare the documents like uh, lld hld and all 
So I already shown you like I mean uh, project life cycle when we discussed uh, what is LLD will contain what HLD will contain and all those things and you can also say that um, involved in designing the data model involved in designing the uh, dimensional model like uh, dimensional model like uh, star schema and the snowflake schema uh, star schema and the star schema and snowflake schema so when you actually say this word you should be able to understand what is advantage of star schema and what is advantage of the snowflake schema so then the fifth one once you design the data model you can say that uh, created a source to target column mapping sheet that is nothing but the data source to target column mapping sheet as part of a design and the sixth one is like prepare the database scripts for creating the tables in the warehouse and the staging area prepare the DDL scripts for uh, creating the for creating the tables in warehouse staging database all these things which you need to do and the seventh one is next this is where your implementation comes into picture or created a mappings uh, created a mappings <clears throat> sessions workflows and uh, all these things uh, as per the requirements and you can also say that uh, eighth one is about unit tested unit testing of the flows or unit testing of all the ETL components and uh, submitting the test results all these things unit testing of all the ETL components and submitting the uh, results what it is there so that you can explain and this is what uh, unit testing of all the ETL components and everything and you can also say that involved in prepare the migration document template for the migration prepared the migration template and coordinated with a testing team for fixing the defects or uh, so these are all like a uh, coordinated with a ETL testing team uh, for fixing the defects and everything uh, fixing the defects so this is also is one of the um, you know the uh, thing that you do and also perform the sanity check uh, perform the sanity check after the migration so all these things you can uh, perform the sanity check after the migration after the QA migration so all these things are like your responsibilities as a developer when you do that so if you're actually applying for a lead position or a lead uh, anything a lead position you can even say that I have managed a team of five and I used to distribute the work to them and uh, let's say I have used to involve in the peer review it's like whenever your fellow developer uh, uh, complete the code and you will review it and then give the inputs to them to modify this and what are the disadvantages of that implementation how better you can actually implement these kind of things will actually involve in the uh, code review so you can even say that if you are going as, as a senior developer code review and all so this is how you have to explain in a way that maybe 10 um, 10 to 12 points probably you can explain that how it will be used and if they ask you about your reporting uh, requirements I mean let's say let's say they ask you on the whether do you have uh, exposure to the reporting tools or the BI tools so if you are good with the BI tools you can say that okay I am um, I'm not an expert in so and so but uh, I can I'm a beginner I'm just learning that and this and all you can just explain in that way so this is how you can uh, explain your uh, project roles and responsibilities so basically what uh, details that you are capturing and they were might ask you which data modeling tool that you have used uh, data modeling tool you can as I said I think I might have discussed in the training uh, data modeling tool either you can download Erwin from the uh, Google I mean uh, computer associate site or Oracle designer just see through the screens and say that okay this is a designer tool or an Erwin which I have used and uh, 
Erwin or an Oracle designer tool which I have used to implement this one. So this is um, more on the project responsibilities and everything. So then once you explain about your project, what is the purpose, what technology which is used, what versions and everything. So by that time you have completed your five minutes of your time. So then they'll ask you with the questions. So basically um, most commonly asked questions uh, in the Informatica Power Center is about what is the complex mapping that you have actually implemented in the project. So Informatica Power Center, uh, let's say when you talk about this, they'll ask you about the complex mapping. See, um, mainly the when you are explaining about a complex mapping, they'll just understand your uh, way that how you're explaining about the requirement. OK, so obviously the complex mapping is something that which cannot be uh, explained or your maybe an interviewer who is actually doing an interview cannot understand even if you say the complex uh, logic whatever it is there so we have a video which is actually posted on our channel about the complex mapping so just don't uh, say the same thing but you can just understand what pro what how you can actually explain it so for us it is not possible for us to give you the individual complex mapping what you have actually implemented so for this complex mapping we already have the video and you can subscribe to our channel we'll keep posting you about the different uh, videos which you have on the um, which you see or what how you have to prepare and everything so the complex mapping part i'm just leaving it to you to understand uh, basically if i try to explain it might cause uh, i mean we may not be i may not be able to give you the 100% um, understanding on the complex mapping part so try to go through that and then see uh, in case if you still want any kind of a documentation or something probably we'll just come up with some documentation which will help you and then do it so that is a common question which they ask so it's just that you need to explain the scenario where you felt it as a complex and uh, how did you actually implement that in your case so that you need to explain so when you are explaining they might come back and say that uh, what is complex in it it is just a normal mapping so don't just say as scd type 1 is complex or scd type 2 is complex scd type 1 and type 2 are very common mappings that we actually develop common mappings which we develop so think about a scenario what we have actually explained and based on that you try to explain them in a complexity manner whatever it is and that is about the complex mapping so second thing is about the performance tuning okay so they will just ask you just to understand more about it how do you actually tune a mapping if i give you a task let's say a workflow is uh, taking this much amount of time what are your steps to tune it definitely in the in the interview they'll not give you the practical scenario uh, to just to understand from you saying that okay just go and tune it right so you just need to explain the process what it is there so when you talk about a performance tuning we did talk about it how to collect the statistics and from there you have to start and explain all the details about the performance tuning so performance tuning is one common question which you get how do you tune the mapping how do you tune the joiner how do you tune the lookup all these things which will be there for each and every transformation you need to understand one trick and then tell them okay look up this is how we can actually improve the performance for a joiner this is how you can do it so all these things whatever we talked about the performance tuning you can explain in detail on the performance tuning part so basically when you start just start from the first you need to understand the bottleneck once you understand the bottleneck then only you can do that so as i said this is a, like a trial and error method only so you nothing is uh, i mean uh, granted in case of you know uh, tuning the performance or whatever so first how to find the bottleneck explain them and when you find the bottleneck how to eliminate the bottleneck that's what you have to explain them in the performance tuning so these two questions are quite common and then we do it so then they will ask you like uh, any etl framework that you have developed which is can be reused across the um, reusable etl framework what etl framework that you have developed for uh, doing this and all so you can just explain uh, for this reusable etl framework if you remember we have actually done uh, sequence generator population so we need uh, we have actually uh, created one reusable transformation 
uh, reusable transformation for uh, generating the surrogate primary key right reusable transformation that you can explain saying that instead of populating the instead of populating the surrogate primary key using the sequence generator we have actually created this reusable transformation uh, uh, for populating the primary key which can be used in the which can be used for every table this is what we have developed so this is an effective framework than your uh, sequence generator transformation or something that way you can explain about the reusable framework so they'll ask you like do you have you done any uh, kind of an automation or this that and all um, you can just say that um, i mean uh, any kind of an automation which you have done uh, to avoid the manual work um, this and all they'll ask so you can say that um, uh, for uh, migration process we have created a shell script utility which will migrate the code from which will export the code from development environment and create an xml files so basically uh, we have created a shell script using a pm rep uh, which will create an xml file which will export the xml file from the dev box which will export the uh, xml files from from development environment so that you can explain i mean just to, in a prompt that, that that's a way that you actually automate so the basic questions about uh, uh, what is a transformation what is a transformation property all these things are quite common questions what you get but when you have to explain about the complex mapping performance tuning automation anything that you have done to reduce the support activities all these things you can say that as a, this one or uh, automation you can also say that uh, one is that email task email task we have implemented for a session failure workflow failure and session success i mean workflow success all these things you can also tell that as an automation task in all the all the workflows we have created an email task for a session failure and the workflow failure so that it will notify our uh, support team for this on the automation part which it is there so this is how you can um, explain the details about the informatica power center part and they'll ask you the questions maybe in terms of uh, what is difference between a static lookup and dynamic lookup persistent cache and uh, they might ask you how do you um, skip the header and footer in a flat file or how do you uh, populate the number of records in the flat file or what this uh, simple kind of a questions which they ask for that you'll get the lot of answers in the internet itself and then do it so mainly after this they'll ask you about the scenarios okay so they'll just give you some scenario and then they'll ask you to expect you to answer that uh, based on that let's say uh, they ask you about the finding the cumulative salary we have seen that is one scenario or dividing the data into three targets first record into first target second record into second target a third record into third target these kind of a scenarios which you get so basically the answering the scenarios is that how better you are understanding the question and then uh, translating that understand I mean question into a transformation that is main important that's it see uh, when when they give you the scenario try to ask them more questions to understand the question better okay so once you understand the question think about it which transformation will help me for to do that and based on that you just explain them the flow nobody will ask you to implement you just have to give the skeleton diagram saying that okay using expression using aggregator i'll achieve this so that you can implement it so to practice all those scenarios you can still continue that scenario things we already gave you one document which is containing almost uh, more than 50 to 60 scenarios which is there and you can practice all of them or you can just go through them what it is being happening so if you practice all these scenarios this, this way it will be good to answer the questions uh, what you get in the interviews basically so all these scenarios i would request you to go through each one of them and then so that your interview process will become very simple and then you can easily crack that so apart from this you have to practice all these examples as well whatever the examples that we have listed over here in the informatica scenarios document all right so see basically the employee table contains a salary and commission in the usd in the target uh, commission and salary will be converted to a given prefix 
uh, given prefix so how do you get that so basically uh, source you have a dollars and you need to actually make it as a rupees so how do you get that and that is what you have to define and understand using this okay so it's basically about how you are understanding the question and how you are implementing that's it so the scenario question is also common uh, to just to understand i mean that they will explain they will expect you to answer when they give you the requirement how you are achieving that that is the common question that you get in the power center scenario question so and the basic questions i'm not talking about it so basic questions uh, for each and every transformation you understand and what are the questions that you have and what is the example that you have implemented and go about it so this is uh, more on the uh, power center part how you uh, prepare it and the data warehousing concept data modeling these are all the theoretical things anyway whatever we have discussed you can just go through that that is more than enough and then answer them so they'll ask you like what is an SED type to this that and all they will ask you in this and when it comes to the unique shell scripting so basically they'll ask you what is this command for what is uh, what kind of shell scripts that you have written in the uh, in your project and all those things so you can just give some examples like i've created a shell script to created a script to archive the files and uh, so something something or the other i mean like let's say i've created a script to delete the files which are older than delete files which are older than 30 days something like this so this way you can actually explain and uh, created a shell script to create a list file uh, to create a list file so all these uh, simple things you can explain they'll ask you like what is the simple commands like what do you mean by echo dollar question mark and uh, what do you what is a command to find out the uh, maybe replace the file or replace the word in a file all these kind of things like i want to display the top five lines bottom five lines what is the command so these are all the basic commands which you get and you need to also answer them so they won't go in deep in the unique shell scripting it's more about they'll ask you very basics only but a informatica developer if you are uh, just like a beginner or more than a beginner that is enough for you to crack the interviews in the unique shell scripting and when it comes to the SQL and the PLSQL, it's basically uh, they will ask you more on how to eliminate the duplicates or what is a minus query does or uh, basically simple questions like how to find out the top three salaries, bottom three salaries, how do you eliminate the duplicate records using a query, all these things which you'll understand. And the PLSQL, they might ask you in terms of uh, difference between a procedure and function and what is a package, what is advantage of package over a procedure, all these kind of a questions they'll ask you. And um, these details they'll go in detail and understand you so these things once you understand the sql basic plsql questions that will be will be able to understand see your primary skill is more on informatica uh, you should be very strong in informatica along with this you have to prepare yourself on to these details as well in a way you'll be able to uh, present yourself in the interviews so that is pretty much uh, which uh, we have um for this batch i mean for uh, in terms of interviews and should always generate the numbers from one every time you do that okay yeah. uh, so for that you need to always select the option reset so that it will always okay. generate the numbers from one okay this is okay. fine and now what i'm saying is you have to use this aggregator transformation here and you have an employee table wherein you need to where is the source which one is a source here in source files emp okay this yeah. is this so just drag and drop and you need to take the two instances of source and connect these two things and the next value you don't require it i just want to find out the
total count and you can use anything I mean you can just use a count of employee number or anything it is just to find for me the total number of count that's it I don't need anything else from this okay and okay. now you have this data basically you need to add a dummy column here so to just to join this data and add one dummy column uh, just I call it as dummy column so which it's going to be an integer and I'll define this as a one and I am initializing it to one okay okay and uh, here also I need one more expression transformation and which I call it as expression underscore aggregator and pull this count information whatever it is there and which is your total count and at the same time I also need an aggregator dummy column so aggregator column so this is also an integer and I'm going to define this as a one again okay so okay. now what I'm going to do is I'm going to join yeah Okay. So I have two flows. I need only these columns. I don't need um, all the other columns from the your uh, this one also aggregator. I need only this data, and I'm going to join this information. So basically, using the joiner, uh, joiner underscore whatever EMP. Now you should have the data. Let's say total count which you have an aggregated column and you need to have the next value and this also as this one so next value this is like a you can call this as a sequence value and now this is what it is so the join condition is going to be you're going to join both of them because uh, dummy column is initialized to one and the aggregate column is initialized to one so you'll get the match and then get it anyway that's going to be the normal join here you need to define the router transformation so basically the total count should go to this and the next value should go to this and you have an employee number employee name and job should go to this so save this now and here the conditions what you have written is next value is less than or equal to this and then greater than okay that's fine so how many records you have in the employee table so let's uh, 22 22 records right so it should be 11 and 11 yeah. and this yeah. let me log into workflow manager okay what is the mapping which is loading the data w into this w underscore divide underscore emp okay yes now let me validate it so what are the file names that you have given uh, let's check that it's a file or a relational table is it it's a yeah, it's, uh, a a it's a table. Yeah, it's a Okay, I've selected a truncate option. Let's see. And let me select it because if it is already there, it will truncate and load. Okay. Now let me run that and go here. Need to have a preview data. This, what is your username? so now you have uh, 11 records here I think or how many more than 11 yeah okay, what about the other one employee 2 I think you have used the same employee definition no it doesn't work so I think yeah see what has happened is you are used the same target right so that's why it is loading all the 22 records into that you should have a different but target the, but why it's loading into only one file so if it is it is not a should... file that you are loading you are loading into a table it's not a file 
Okay. He's a relational writer. So, uh, logic and everything is the uh, same, but I I done a mistake at target, right? So because yeah. I just pulled just the same. To, you just same. need to. Okay, let's do one thing. Okay, let me just convert um, employee one and employee two as a flat files instead of targets. Okay, employee one and employee two. You don't have that. Okay, that's fine. Let me let me create that. I just pulled uh, uh, the targets from source only itself. That's all. Okay, I'm just changing this as a flat file. Okay. Okay. And now it is a flat file here. So anyway, these two are the flat files. So if I refresh the mapping, so let me go to this. And still, it is relational, right? I'm not sure. It's changing. Okay. It's taken as a flat file. I have not saved it. Okay, it's loading everything into this. I don't know why is that so. <clears throat> okay, let's run the debugger. We'll see that what is happening. Maybe this, I'm not sure what from where it is starting the sequence. Oh, current value is 287 now. Oh. So the value is already being incremented. I think that's the reason it's done. Okay. Now it is working. Check these are the eleven records. Yeah, yes. And yes. these are the eleven records. What you? Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Captain. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thanks.